Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about ideal solutions and graphs related to them. This becomes a very confusing topic because there are a lot of graphs to be done, there is a lot of interlinking, you have to understand it from thermodynamics point of view, you have to understand it from chemical point, chemical bonding point of view. But try and understand that this, the behavior of the liquids is an interplay of all these different things. Here, ideal solutions. Ideal means obedient, very good, obeying everything to the T. So, ideal solutions are those which will obey Raoult's law under all conditions. In other words, we said that in Raoult's law, the vapor pressure of a component is equals to the mole fraction of that component in solution multiplied by the vapor pressure of that component of that substance in pure form. In other words, when you mix two liquids, two miscible liquids, what will happen is each one of them will obey the Raoult's law completely. In other words, such type of particles don't distinguish between each other. So, the force of attraction that will be there between the blue particles or the force of attraction which will be there between the brown particles will be the same as that between the blue and the brown particles over here. So that is why we have listed over here AA interactions and BB interactions are the same as AB interactions. Because the forces of attraction are same, so when bonds are formed and bonds are broken, the, there is no energy release that happens. In other words, the enthalpy of the mixing is also zero. They are pulling each other equally. So, there will be no change in the volume on mixing the two liquids. So, supposing I have taken 10 ml of the blue liquid and 10 ml of the brown liquid, when I mix the two of them, the resulting product will be 20 ml, the resulting mixture sorry would be a 20 ml mixture of blue and brown liquid. How can such liquid mixtures be separated and how do we plot their partial pressures? This is depicted in terms of these two graphs which we have drawn. First of all, please remember that these graphs are not drawn to scale. Coming to first, vapor pressure composition. I shall explain each part step by step and you can go through the video again if you are confused and try to explain it to yourself also. We start with the first part of the graph, the vapor pressure composition curve. We know that ideal solutions obey the Raoult's law under all conditions of temperature. So we have got temperature over here constant, sorry, vapor pressure and we here plot the mole fraction. Now, when we have only B in the solution, B means let's say my blue particles. If I have only B in the solution, in other words, what will happen over here is there is a certain value to that vapor pressure and that is called as PV0, that is the vapor pressure of pure B. If now I add A to the liquid B, when A is added to it on the surface, there are not just particles of B, there will now be particles of A as well. In other words, the vapor pressure of B will decrease. Further addition of A means further decrease in the vapor pressure of B. Further addition of A, further decrease in the vapor pressure of B. If I talk about only A in the liquid mixture, then the vapor pressure of B is nothing. It's zero. Come to a second case where I start with only A in the liquid, in the container. So, there will be a certain vapor pressure of A denoted by PA0. 
as we keep adding b to it the vapor pressure begins to decrease 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 and we have a case where there is only b when there is only b there is no a there will be no vapor pressure of a so we have two graphs over here the red line indicating the partial pressure of b in the mixture the purple line indicating the partial pressure of a in the mixture ideal solution that means the total vapor pressure will be equals to the sum of the partial pressure of the components in the solution so what we have over here is the total vapor pressure of the mixture will always lie in between that of pure b and that of pure a if you notice at no point does this line go above the two points or go below the two points this is the max this is the minimum that we have over here vapor pressure on the y axis composition on the x axis that is why it is called as vapor pressure composition curve for ideal solutions since we have plotted graph for two liquids a and b we have at the first uh, vertex we have a is zero and the second vertex b is zero here this represents presence of only b pb not represents the vapor pressure of pure b this represents only a in the solution and pa not represents vapor pressure of pure a now we shall use this concept in order to determine what will be the composition of the vapor when such a liquid mixture is allowed is heated when this is heated what will happen is a liquid which has lower vapor pressure lower vapor pressure means which is uh, not evaporating easily that is why its vapor pressure is low it is not turning into the vapor state easily will have a higher boiling point denoted by the second graph this graph represents temperature and composition again a is 0 b is 1 a is 1 b is 0 here i have only a p a not will give me the boiling point of pure a in the first graph p a not is lower than p b not in other words the vapor pressure of a is lower than that of pure b so the boiling point of pure a will be higher than that of pure b over here so what do we have over here is t a not represents the boiling point of pure a since pb not is higher its boiling point will be lower than that of pure a now plotting the graphs here we do not get a straight line it will be a slight curve this is the composition of the liquid when such a liquid mixture is allowed to this is the composition of the liquid that we have got now when we take liquid of let us say composition c1 we heat it it starts boiling when it starts boiling that means temperature is constant we know that during transition state the temperature remains constant so the vapor now has a composition corresponding to c2 this corresponds to c1 i started with a liquid in which there is more of a and less of b when we heated it the vapor had more of b and less of a for the simple reason that the boiling point of b is less than that of pure a or a in the liquid mixture i collect this liquid and again heat it when we heat it again this is the graph that we will get and the vapor now has moved more towards the composition where there is more of b and less of a we have composition c2 
In C3, the amount of B is much higher than in C1. In other words, we will come to a stage where if I boil it further and condense it, I will get my distillate as only pure B. And what will be left behind with me would only be pure A. This is the logic that we use when we carry out fractional distillation of liquids. Here we have taken the liquid mixture, heated it, collected the vapor, again heated the, uh, sorry, condensed the vapor, again heated it, got the liquid mixture. Instead of collecting the liquid every time, we have devised what we call as a fractionating column about which you would have heard and you would have read in your previous classes. This is connected to the flask in which heating is happening. This is a very rough diagram that I am drawing to give you an idea. So, when we heat the two, first of all, particles of both A and B will start rising here because of the heat. Now A and B both go but because B has a lower boiling point than A what will happen is the particles of B will continue to rise whereas the particles of A will fall back into the distilling flask. This happens at each and every stage in this fractionating column. So there is evaporation, condensation, evaporation, condensation. But with every stage, the condensate is becoming richer in the less volatile liquid, that is A, whereas the distillate, that means the evaporating liquid, has become more rich in the more volatile liquid. So what we have over here is finally, B separates out whereas A remains in the liquid mixture. So we have over here B will be collected as a distillate whereas A would be collected as a residue. This type of behavior is shown by substances when they are taken in kind of dilute state and what kind of substances? Since we are saying that the force of attraction between the particles is similar, so we will have cases like hexane and heptane. If I take a mixture of hexane and heptane, chemically they are similar, they behaviorally they are similar, physical behavior. So such type of liquid mixtures would tend to show us ideal behavior. For a write-up on this presentation, please visit the site Learning Chemistry is Fun Google Sites. And you have any doubts, you are most welcome to send us a mail on the mail ID given on the website.